Hello and welcome. I recently gave a talk about how parachutes saved lives in World War II. That was especially true if the pilot was bailing out over land and not bailing out over the English Channel. So dreadful were the consequences of bailing out over the Channel that the Germans coined the term Canal Krankheit or Channel Sickness. It might surprise you to learn that the RAF has operated a marine branch since 1918. It was in 1918 that the RAF was established through the merging of the aviation arms of the Royal Navy, the Army and the Royal Flying Corps. During the First World War, the Royal Navy Air Service had built up a force of seaplanes and had accumulated between 300 and 500 vessels of various kinds. They were used to ferry crews, stores and supplies between the shore and the aircraft. However, the Navy was from the start opposed to and did its best to prevent the creation of the new service. No surprise there. In the interwar period, the Marine Craft Section contracted to a force of 150 vessels which in addition to supporting the operation of seaplanes were equipped for rescue operations with the launch being at the ready whenever an aircraft was flying over water. As the vessels it had inherited from the Navy began to wear out, the Marine Craft Section built launches capable of higher speeds and greater capacity. The arrival of high-speed craft into the MCS was driven in part by T.E. Lawrence, better known as Lawrence of Arabia. Whilst an airman at RAF Mountbatten, Lawrence had previously witnessed the drowning of the crew of a seaplane when the seaplane tender sent to their rescue was too slow in arriving. The 11 metre long ST200 seaplane tender Mark I was introduced into service and boasted a range of 230 kilometres and could travel at a top speed of 54 kilometres per hour. In the late 1930s, the RAF high-speed launch was introduced, which had a top speed of 70 kilometres per hour. As Britain entered the Second World War, the MCS found itself ill-prepared for war. During the Battle of Britain, the MCS could only keep 10 of the 13 high-speed launches available for SC rescue operations at any one time. The high performance of the craft was bought at the expense of engines which had a service life of just 360 hours. The high-speed launches were also individually assigned to individual coastal command bases, primarily to support the operation of those squadrons based there. And, although theoretically available for rescue operations in general, this was done on an uncoordinated ad hoc basis. Even with the help of civilian vessels and the Royal Navy, air crew who bailed out or ditched in the North Sea and English Channel had only a 20% chance of being returned to their squadrons. Between mid-July 1940 and October, Britain lost 215 hard-to-replace pilots and air crew to the seas. In light of this, in 1941, an emergency meeting was convened by Air Marshal Sir Arthur Bomber Harris. The Royal Navy offered to take over in its entirety the air-sea rescue role. The RAF declined and subsequently created the Directorate of Air-Sea Rescue on the 6th of February 1941, which adopted the motto, The Sea Shall Not Have Them. Operationally, it was to become known as the Air-Sea Rescue Services, which later became the RAF Search and Rescue Force. The headquarters were co-located with that of the Coast Command with which it was to operate closely. As more high-speed launches became available, these were formed into new dedicated air-sea rescue units. These worked to improve the survival of air crews through the issue of better survival equipment, including one-man inflatable dinghies for fighter pilots copied from the Germans, the training of aircrew in ditching drills, the development of airdroppable survival equipment and better coordination amongst the different services. The Air Sea Rescue Squadrons flew a variety of aircraft in usually hand-me-downs. Supermarine Spitfires and Bolton Paul Defiance patrolled for downed aircrew and Avro Ansons were used to drop supplies and dinghies. Supermarine Walrus and Supermarine Sea Otter Amphibious Craft 
were used to pick up aircrew from calm seas. Further out to sea and in rougher waters, the large flying boats such as the Catalinas and short Sunderlands of Coastal Command could do so, but were not always available. The role of aircraft in the Air Sea Rescue Service, therefore, was to locate downed airmen and to keep them alive by dropping them survival equipment and stores until rescued. All the while, the cold water was causing cramps and hypothermia. By the end of the Second World War, more than 8,000 aircrew and 5,000 civilians had been rescued. In the early 1950s, helicopters had begun to replace fixed-wing aircraft and supplement the marine craft in the search and rescue role with the introduction of the Westland Wessex and later the Westland Sea King. It was now possible to consider the replacement of marine craft in all sea and weather conditions. The branch ceased to be on the 8th of January 1986. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like to encourage further work.